this God has set this up for a purpose. The Lord has given me a word for today, and I want to speak to you, um, and I want you to take this into your heart. God is, is allowing certain things to happen, and we're wondering why. Sometimes God allows things to happen, and we wonder why God does that. And so what I want to do, I want to take a minute today, and I want to speak to you from the topic of defiant faith, adapting to what God is allowing. Now, while, while, we, while we're preparing this, this is probably a new experience for you, especially if you're a person who can only sense God within the four walls of a church. All your life, you've been coming to church, and you've been sitting in a seat. Matter of fact, you have your own seat in a certain place in the sanctuary that you claim is your own. And so it's kind of weird for you being at home. You're probably in your um, bedside Baptist attire, which is your robe, and your, uh, you probably got your coffee or whatever. Um, but I want you to listen. It's easy to be distracted, so I want you to focus on what the Lord is about to say to you. Um, I, was, I was preparing my heart, saying, God, you know, this is a very difficult season for many people. And um, I want to be clear on what the Lord wanted to say. And so the Lord began to speak to me about this, this topic of adaptation because um, on last week we were right here in the sanctuary, all of us, and we were worshiping together. Had a move of God in both locations in uh, Dothan and Montgomery, um, online or community city on Saturday. We had a move of God as well. Now here we are um, this week, uh, this Sunday morning, of sitting in front of computers and receiving the word of God this way. Um, I want to speak to you on the, this wise because God is trying to teach us that there are things that he's going to do that he will not explain to us before they happen. And this entire message is going to be us looking at what God does without explaining it. The, word, the definition of the word adapt means to, to alter something in order to make it suitable or usable for a specific purpose. It also means to undergo modifications in order to fit new circumstances. And I believe that the world is going through a shift. The world is changing to some degree. And because it's changing and we don't know the timetable of God, it feels strange to us. And it feels in, in a lot of ways like, like the carpet has been pulled from under us. It feels like, like uh, um, the enemy is winning. But I want you to know something, and I've been saying this for years, the devil always overplays his hand and God always wins in the end. Amen? Uh, we're in a situation now, uh, for whatever reason, God has prevented his church for a season from gathering in buildings to, uh, uh, to moving us to connecting online and in our homes. I can only imagine what God is targeting, but God knows what he's targeting. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe we took our gatherings for granted. Or, or maybe we became comfortable just meeting him at a certain address and then leaving him there, and then we call that church. And maybe God is trying to remind us that we are the church. And that he, the Lord says, upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Maybe what God is trying to do for us is to kind of recalibrate us, to show us that wherever he is, that's where we are. Not just within the four walls, not at a certain address, but we are the church, whether we are present in a building or not. So regardless of the why, we do know that God has allowed this, and I want to speak to that word allow for a minute. It means that God has permitted it, and for a season God has sanctioned it, and God has given his nod to this because it plays into his overarching plan for this culture and this generation. So I want you to just kind of um, listen with me for a minute as I speak to you about this. On the screen for me, put Second Thessalonians. Uh, well, let's, let's do our confession first. Um, I, I want everybody in the room and everybody watching at home to confess with me. Ready? Let's confess together. I am about to hear the life-changing word of God that creates, instructs, delivers, and empowers. I receive from the Lord eyes to see, ears to hear, and a wise and understanding heart. I choose to believe the gospel of the finished work of Jesus Christ, and I will leave here today full of faith, full of life, uh-huh, in Jesus' name, amen. Why don't you clap to the Lord if you don't mind doing that? Clap in your home as well. Listen. This is a wonderful time to turn your home into a sanctuary for the Lord. Teach your children that wherever, wherever you are, wherever you, wherever you gather, that's where the Lord is. Amen? And so you, you may not leave here today, but you're going to be there where you are, full of faith, full of love, and full of life in Jesus' name. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1, I, I want to take my text from there. And because of, uh, we're online, we're kind, of, we're kind of limited in our time. And already I can see I'm not going to make the time, so I'm not going to uh, try to push it, but just work with me. The Apostle Paul is writing to the church in Thessalonica, and he gets to a certain part in his, in his uh, word to them. He says, finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord 
may have free course and be glorified even as it is among you. And I want, I want to kind of speak to this text as I unpack it. He says to them, this is not necessarily the last thing I'm going to say to you. He said, but this is an important point. Um, I was trying to work my way to this. And he said, um, I want you to pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course. In other words, um, the word of the Lord would, would not experience any successful resistance. And believe it or not, that's what this, that's what this time is for. The Lord has shut things down, I believe, in this world, allowed the enemy to, to play a, this a virus card because the word of the Lord needs to have, have free course and needs to be center stage. He said, uh, pray for us that when we speak the word of the Lord, it will do what it's supposed to do. And when he used the term be glorified, it means to be accepted by sinners. He said, this is a time where the sinners are going to hear the word of God, and we want the word of God to do what it's supposed to do, even as it did with you. Verse 2 says, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable men and wicked men. Uh, the word unreason unreasonable here is a funny word. It literally in the Greek means weird. It means to be delivered from weird people, whatever that means, whatever that meant to them. But uh, it, it means unusually evil people who are really triggered by the word of God or by the things of God. He said, uh, pray that we may be delivered from them and from wicked or malicious men. And then he makes this statement. He says, for all men have not faith. Everyone say that out loud. For all men have not faith. And I want to speak to that just for a minute. Not all men have faith. Some of us have been in church for so long that we speak a certain language, I call it Christianese, or, or we believe that everyone sees the way we see. And the truth of the matter is that they don't. The Bible says right here that though, although we are people of defined faith and we are leaning into a defined faith, everyone does not have faith. And what that means is we're going to run into people that can't see what we see. According to the scripture, according to the scripture um, because we are people of faith, uh, we have been given access to divine wisdom, divine insight, and a certain understanding that others don't possess. In 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, uh, the Apostle Paul said to the church in Corinth, he says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. You got it? He says we walk by faith, not by sight. So we have a certain amount, of, our faith gives us the ability to see things that our natural eyes can't see. And therefore, if people don't have faith, that means they can't see what we see. How many of you get that? This is, this is interesting to note as well. He says, not all men have faith. That means they can't see certain things. And in Hebrews 11 and 3, it says, by faith, we understand that the words were framed by the word of God. And it, uh, through faith, we understand. So we have a certain insight. We have a certain uh, um, discernment that comes to us, a certain wisdom that comes to us because we have faith. So when the Bible says, when Paul says all men don't have faith, he's saying the fact that they don't have faith means that they have a certain set of eyes that, they, that we possess that they don't have. Um, there are certain things that we may say and think that they can never grasp or understand. That is a critical fact because these are the times we live in right now. Um, this puts us in a position where in order to win people over to the Lord, we must be wise. We must be wise to win people to the Lord. Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you this right now. Here's what I believe about what's happening right now. I believe that God took the church out of the four walls and he put us online because he's reclaiming the airwaves. What, what God is doing, he's reclaiming. Watch this. You'll be surprised. You, you know for a fact of the, about the things you can access online. I mean, you, there's so much trash, there's so much uh, temptation online, and so God is, he, for whatever reason, we don't even know the whole deal, but we know that God has for some reason uh, uh, took us out of the four walls, put us online, and here's the problem. There are people now who resist us, and they say, well, you, if, how can you be in defined faith and you're not meeting? Are you afraid of the virus? And the, the very fact that people ask that question tells me that they don't understand the importance of adaptation. When God modifies something or adapts the thing to fit a certain uh, uh, time or certain uh, time frame or area, it doesn't mean that God has backed up or reneged on what he planned to do. It means that he changed, even superheroes change form and shape. So God, is, God has taken his church, watch this now, God has taken his church where the key component in, a, in, a, in the church is fellowship. Forsake not the assembly of yourselves together. Come together, strengthen each other, build each other. Then, he, then for a season God says, God allows the government to say don't meet. And the church is like, oh, we're going to meet, we're gonna, because that's defined. That's not what defined faith is. Defined faith, I'm going to show you in the scriptures, is us discerning exactly what God has in mind. And although we don't know the details of it, we follow God blindly into the future that he's planning. 
You got it? Now, I want to show you this. This is important. So I want to show you this scripture in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 30. In Proverbs 11, 30, it's the scripture says, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And it says, And he that winneth souls is wise. He that winneth souls is wise. He that winneth souls is wise. Now, the word win in this verse is from a word that means to capture. Now, listen to this. It means, it, it means to capture. And so when the church hears uh, this term, or capture, or to win, or the, or the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent take it by force. We, we hear win souls and we think to, to conquer them. But the Lord does not want us to conquer people. Matter of fact, I want to show you how this word is used in other places. Uh, this good example. When you fall in love with someone, or, or, it, it doesn't mean that the person has conquered you. Love is not the act of conquering. What it really is, they have captured your heart. You, you can actually testify and say, yeah, man, she, she, won, she won my heart, or, or he captured my heart. You got it? So, so it's not, this, this word win does not mean to, uh, the word is captured, it, mean, it doesn't mean to conquer. It literally means to capture the heart. In order for us now to capture people's hearts, we have to behave in such a way that they literally fall in love with Jesus. You got it? Now, the word wise here, and, and, and the Bible, or the writer of, of, of this scripture, um, could have used many words for wisdom because there's so many different words in the um, Hebrew Bible for wisdom, but the, it, the writer used the word hakam, H-A-K-A-M, hakam, which means to be skilled and experienced at something. To be skilled and experienced at something. And I want to show you an example, uh, example of what that means. So, so to, when we think of being, of being skilled and experienced at something, what we think about is, is having worked in the area for a long time, having developed a certain skill by practice, and then um, maybe took a job and then I have years of experience. But with God, that's not the way experience is defined. I want to show you something. In, uh, in Exodus chapter 36 and verse 1, there's a scripture, Exodus 36 and verse 1. I want to show you how uh, this word hakam is used. It says, Then wroth Bezalel and Eholiab, and every wise-hearted man. You see that word wise-hearted? It says, in whom the Lord put wisdom, that's the word again, and understanding, and here's what it says, to know how to work all manner of work. And I want to, I want to emphasize that, to know how to do it. This wisdom that God is talking about, or that uh, is spoken about here, um, he that wins his soul is wise, it means that he knows how to go about winning people. You got it? And in this season, I believe that we have a, such an open door to win people. You have to be, but here's the thing, you have to want to win people. What if this is, the, this is one of the last major things that happened in the earth before the rapture? What if the thing that God is building up to or the thing that God has planned is something that we, we were, have been talking about for years and it finally is upon us? I've been alive for a long time. And we've never experienced anything like this. We've never seen anything like this. I've been pastoring for several years, been preaching for a lot of years. We've never experienced, you can't call a preacher up and say, what do I do in a situation like this? No one has ever faced this before. But God in the, in the last couple of years has set it up where we, where we could be online. You got it? He set it up where we could give online. He set the whole thing up and then this happens. God is working on something. You cannot, listen, do not give the devil all the credit. God has allowed this for a reason. And when God allows something, if it is seen that God allows the enemy to win, don't count God out. Don't forget the cross. The enemy thought he had won. And three days later, God comes back. You got it? This is important for us to understand. So the, for us to understand. So the Bible shows us here, this word wise means to know how to do something. How to know how to win souls. The scripture says all people don't have faith. So if we're going to win them to the Lord, we must be careful to discern opportunities that's placed before us. This is the opportunity. Don't, don't just, listen, I know, I know for those of you who are sitting here in the building, I, I just feel an a, 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 a unction of a moment. It's a significant moment. It's, it's a Kairos moment because uh, people are watching at home, but you're here. And I want you to listen carefully to what I'm about to say. There are people in your family that don't know the Lord. There are people in your family that you've been seen playing with God for a long time or ignoring the Lord for a long time. This is a critical moment during this time when all eyes are either on the virus or on, on the answer. Very few people are, 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 are inundated with the news, so to speak. They want to know what to do. This, what a powerful time. What a powerful opportunity. What a powerful opportunity to share the Lord with them. Now, I will show you the power of this word. The word opportunity is, is uh, in its... Um, in capsulized definition, it means an open door. An open door. So I want to show you how this open door thing works. In 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 8, 
um, Paul is writing now to the church on 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Give me King James if you don't mind. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 8. Paul says, but I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost. And in, in verse 9, here's what he said. He says, for a great door and effectual is open unto me. And then he adds at the end, here's what he says, and there are many what? There are many adversaries. Whenever God opens a door of opportunity for the church, there will always be adversaries. There will always, the enemy will always, when, when, the enemy notices when doors open in the realm of the spirit, and what he does, he rushes demonic forces by the doors to shut the doors down so that what God is trying to get through the door will not come through the door. That's where the church comes in. Paul, Paul, matter of fact, at one place, Paul says, pray for me because God just opened the door. And just like he said, he, uh, when I, in the first scripture I read, is that whenever a door opens, our call is to pray. We don't know what's going on, but our call is to pray. Our call is to do what? Pray. Okay, now, maybe, could it be that God kept us at home? You can't go to work because God wants you at home praying? Could it be that 2020 is such a significant year, the first year of this new decade, is such a significant year for what God wants to do, that God literally gave you time off your job? Could it be that God, God, God uh, shut things down to get you uh, to take care of your home because he knows what's coming down the pike? Could it be? Well, I want to show you something about doors. Doors don't just open. In Revelation chapter 3, verse 7, Jesus is speaking to the church. That's what he says. Um, he says, write this letter um, to the angel of the church in Philadelphia. This is the message from the one who is holy and true, the one who has the key of David. Here's what he says. What he opens, no one can close, and when he closes, no one can open. How many of you know he's talking about doors? He said, when I open the door, no one can close it. When I close the door, can nobody open it? And then the next verse, he says this. He says, I know all the things you do, and here's what he said, I have opened a door for you that no one can close. He says, you have a little strength, yet you obeyed my word and you did not deny me. God said, here's what the Lord Jesus is saying to this church. He says, I see what, you, what you're working with. I know that you're up against a lot. Here's what he said, you're running out of strength. So to help you out, America, to help you out, Alabama, to help you out, NCC, what I'm going to do is instead of giving you more strength, I'll just open the door. This is an open door season. Declare it. Speak it to your children. Say it out loud to yourself. Write it somewhere. Put it on a, on a vision board or, or put it on your refrigerator. This is the open door season. I believe it with all my heart. People of faith are called to discern the times and the seasons of God's work before everyone else. Let me explain something to you real quickly. As, uh, we are people of defined faith. We didn't name ourselves that the Lord says we are. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you have to be a person of faith. Here's what I want to show you. There's a scripture in the Bible concerning David. David was, was running from Saul, and the season had come for him to be king. But right before David became king, the Bible says a lot of things started going wrong. But another thing was happening as well. And what we tend to do is we tend to uh, um, emphasize the negative and downplay the positive. You say, all oh, this bad news, but there's some good news out there too. How many of you know that people are being healed of the coronavirus? A, a woman that's 103 years old in China recovered from it. They're, they're, they're finding cures, but we're not seeing that in the news. We're not seeing it on the news, but there are good things that are happening. Here's what I want to show you. Put, I, I'm going to go through a bunch of scripture, maybe one, two, three, four verses. In 1 Chronicles chapter 12, first give me verses 1 and 2. I want to show you something. So David is running from Saul. Saul is still king, but God has anointed David to be king. It says, the following men joined David at this place called Ziklag while he was hiding from Saul, son of Kish. They were among the warriors who fought uh, beside David in battle. Look at verse 2. It says, in verse 2, quick if you don't mind. There you go. All of them were expert archers. They could shoot arrows or sling stones with their left hand as well as their right. Now get this. They were all relatives of Saul. David is running from Saul, but they were all relatives of Saul from the tribe of Benjamin. But why would, they go, why would they join David if Saul is their relative? Here's why. Because they saw something. They didn't know what it was. But they discerned something was coming, and they knew it involved David. But it gets even better. Go down to verse 21. In verse 21, the Bible says, They helped David chase down bands of raiders, for they were all brave and able warriors who became commanders in his army. Look at verse 22. Verse 22 says, Day after day, more men joined David until he had a great army like the army of God. Look at verse 23. It says, there are, uh, These are the numbers of the armed warriors who joined David at Hebron. Um, interestingly enough, the, the, the word Hebron, the name Hebron means association. It means the gathering of people 
who, who uh, pool their resources together. So although um, the church may be, may be scattered and decentralized, really, believe it or not, God is, God is actually joining us together. Sometimes God has to pull the local church apart to establish the global church. This is going to be the year, watch this, I, I've, I've said this word before, this is the year of collaboration, of co-laboring. And we have become so territorial. We become so, so dismissive of each other's gifts. Uh, 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 one prophet prophesied in 2020, he says we're, going to, we're in need of teachers. So what do you do when your church doesn't have a teacher? You import one from another church. Why? Because the whole church belongs to the Lord Jesus. You got it? And so I want you to see this now. The Bible says that they were joined together at a place called Association or Hebron. They were all eager, watch this, to see David become king instead of Saul, just as the Lord had promised. No one talked to them. It just dropped in their heart from the, on high, and they start gathering towards David. But there's, a, there's other scriptures. Look at verse 32. In verse 32, the Bible says, from the tribe of Issachar. Now, different tribes are coming, different people are coming. But from the tribe of Issachar, there were 200 leaders of the tribe with their relatives and look what the Bible says all these men understood the signs of the times and they knew the best course for Israel to take check this out the Bible says here that the people God was joining people to David what was he doing God was working on something and God never said it was gonna happen G David was always in God's presence he was writing songs they re they're recording the psalm but God never told him about uh, the, the time that I promise is at hand God never said anything to him. All he starts seeing is things started shifting. God started allowing changes to happen. People start coming from, Tro uh, from some Saul's family. And David's just watching all this shift happening. What's happening? God is adapting. He's, he's adapting everything towards where he's going. Keep your eyes on the, the way things are shifting. Keep your eyes on what's happening because what God is doing, he's turning this thing around for his good. Look at verse 30. Uh, uh, 38 the Bible says all these men came in battle away they were dressed for battle to Hebron with the single purpose of doing what making that making David the king over all Israel in fact everyone in Israel agreed that David should be the king by the time all this assembling started to happen by the time David had all his full army the Bible says that by by the time everybody was around David and postured all of Israel was already convinced now David should be king without David running a political campaign. God himself touched people's hearts. Right now, I believe, all around the world, in the church, and the, uh, 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 around in, in every nation, God is posturing and positioning people for what he has planned. So there will be times when we, by faith, must lead the way, undeterred by the fears, the threats, the opinions of faithless people, because everyone doesn't have faith. In order to pave the way for these people's deliverance, we have got, there are times where we have to push our way forward. But there are other times when by faith, watch this now, we must behave in ways and make decisions for the sole purpose of reducing the fears of people that don't have faith. Remember, they can't see what we see. They don't understand what we understand. So if the, if the, if the community, if, if the governor, if the president, uh, or the mayor says churches don't assemble, listen, what, why would we assemble we, we have faith. We know if we come here, watch this now, and we stand on the word of God and plead the blood of Jesus, nothing is going to happen to us. But what about this? What about we submit to the, to the order that they gave and, and adapt ourselves to what God has allowed to find the purpose of God? You know what we try to do? We try to keep on doing the same thing we've been doing. We keep, you keep trying to push forward and God is like, no, I changed the agenda. And what happens to the church a lot is the church keeps going down the one path when God has changed the way he wants to lead. Amen? Now I want to show you this. I want to show you this. This is important. This is important. Uh, I want to show you an example of the Apostle Paul. I'm running out of time and I'm going to go over my time tonight because I'm in charge. Amen? Put on the screen for me Acts chapter 16 verse 1. I just made a command decision by the Holy Ghost. The Bible says that Paul went first to Derby and then to Lystra where there was a young disciple named Timothy. His mother was a Jewish believer, but his father was a what? Greek. His father's Greek. Look at verse 2. It says, Timothy was well thought of by believers in Lystra and Iconium. Verse 3. So Paul wanted him to join them on their journey. In deference to the Jews of the area, no, look what he said, the Jews of the area, Paul arranged for Timothy to be what? Circumcised before they left. Why? Well, now, wait a minute. How many of you know you don't have to be, you don't have to be circumcised to be a Christian? But the Jews believed in circumcision, and they had not yet learned the, the right way 
of to worship God. So the Bible says, uh, so in deference, to, he deferred to them. He, what he, he adapted himself to them, the Bible says, um, and he had Timothy circumcised, for everyone knew that his father was a Greek. Isn't that amazing? Everyone knew that his father, what's, what's verse 4 says? Everyone knew that his father was a Greek. And so in, in, in this understanding that his father was, we go to verse 4 quickly. Then they went from town to town, instructing the believers to follow the decisions made by the apostles and elders in Jerusalem. Look at verse 5, and it says, So the churches were strengthened in their faith and grew larger every day. Because Paul had the wisdom to adapt himself to the community, to the culture, he had the wisdom to make the, the adaptation. Here's what happens. The people now say, you know what? Um, he respects what we believe. He listens to what, what we think. And now they were open to hear. The church is sometimes too heavy-handed in the way we deliver what we deliver, in the way we do what we do. So I want to I conclude with this, and I want to, um, there's a couple things I could share right now, but I want to conclude with this. The Holy Spirit knows what a culture needs in order to properly position that culture to believe. Listen to what I'm about to tell you. Some people need to see the church standing up to systems and pushing back against social injustice. And because the church did not do that in the last season, many people walked away from the Lord. And the church missed a major opportunity because we refused to speak up. But there are times in the culture when they need to see us complying and submitting to the laws and the, gu and the guidance is provided. And because of that, watch this now, God is, is moving on a lot of churches to move out your buildings and go online. And, and listen, and, and those who decide to meet, listen, follow the Lord. But what I'm saying for us, NCC, what we need to understand, NCC, what we need to understand is the reason we made a change was to adapt. Why? Because we want to know what God is doing next. Is there anybody that wants to know what God's doing next? Is there anybody a handful of y'all to make a lot of noise? Make a lot of noise. Yeah. yeah, we want to know what God is doing next. So I want to end here while I'm over my time. I might as well be over my time. I, I want to show you something that's going to help you. God is calling upon us, people of faith, to adjust our thinking and our efforts in order to accommodate what he's allowing. What God is allowing. What is God allowing in your life that you seem like no matter what you do, you can't resist it? Could it be that God is using a heavy-handed approach? He's pushing you in a certain direction. Is he allowing your circumstances to kind of corner you? Is he doing it for a reason? Could it be that it's not the enemy? Could it be it's God? Could it be that God wants us to make the change so he could give us what he has next? I want to show you something. In the scriptures, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 18 Put a passion translation up there. I want to show you something. People of faith must realize that a culture that is thrown into crisis is an open door for the Lord to draw people to himself. A culture that is thrown into, into crisis is an open door. So we must adapt our faith. Everybody say adapt our faith. I want to show you something. So Paul is, Paul is, is telling this, uh, he's talking to the church in Corinth and he's kind of giving his MO or the way he goes about doing what he does. He says, so then, um, where is my reward? And I'm using verse 18 because I want to show you what he's saying. He says, it is found in continually depositing the good news into people's heart without obligation, free of, talk, free of charge, and not insisting on my rights to be financially supported. Paul begins this thing, and here's what he said. Paul says, you know why I don't take pay? He said, I don't want to be paid because I want to be free of obligation to you. I don't want to owe you a thing so you can't tell me what to do. But in the next verse, that's what he said. He says, now even though I'm free from obligation to others, in other words, no one told us we couldn't meet. No, they simply suggested it. They said, well, these are guidelines. But here's what Paul says. Even though I'm free from obligation to others, he said, I joyfully make myself a servant to all. Why? Why? In order to do what? In order to win converts. It, right? Win as many converts as possible to the Lord. Is that wise? Yes, that's how we capture people. He says, I don't have to do it. He said, but I've made myself do it. Why? Because I want to win conference to the Lord. Look at verse 20. He says this. He said, I became Jewish to the Jewish people in order to win them to the Messiah. He said, I became like, an un like, like one under the law to gain people who are stuck under the law, even though I myself am not, I'm, I'm not under the law. The next verse says what he said. He says, and to those who were without Jewish laws, I became like them. Paul said, if I, went to, if I went to a party and they were dancing, I danced too. You got it? He said, if they offered wine, he said, I, I, depending on my disposition, I may take a sip. I, I went to a party, they offered me champagne. I said, cheers. 
put it down, didn't drink it. Another party I went to, they said, cheers. Everybody looked at me, so I had to take a sip. So I took my sip. I didn't die, it ain't going to hell. What I became, I became like them to do it, to win them. What? Look, watch this now. He says, um, in order to win them, although I'm not outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ. Look at verse 22. He said, I became weak to the weak. Why? To do what? To win the weak. He said, I've adapted. Look at this. I've adapted to the culture of every place I've gone so that I could more easily win people to Christ. Let me show you something that's going to help you. I want to end here with this. Here's what I believe. In verse 23, he simply said, in verse 23, I've done all this so that I will become God's partner for the sake of the gospel. God is calling us in this time to partner with him. I want to I pray for you and, and, and pray for boldness to come upon you so that the Spirit of the Lord could use you in this time when, you, when you're at home, at this time when the world is in crisis, to understand that the purpose, the main purpose of God in crisis is to draw the world to himself and to get believers recalibrated to our place in God. The Lord is calling you to, to partner with him. The Lord is calling you to be a witness, to speak up for him. He will give your words weight. He will cause what you say to make a change. There are people who are sick right now. You're watching this. And you say, Pastor, but I got sick in this. Listen, but the Lord has you. The Lord has you. You have faith. You use your faith. And those of us watch us now, those of us who say, well, Pastor, I'm a person of faith. Well, use your faith for people who don't have faith. And remember, they can't see what you see. They don't understand what you understand. But if you take the posture of I want to win them, I want, to, I want their heart to be captured by the Lord, then there's a certain disposition, a certain adaptation that has to happen. Father, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. I pray that this word today will bring forth life, will increase faith, and cause your, cause your people to know that we must properly discern your doing. And in this way, Lord, we can insert ourselves into the equation, adaptable and usable by you, so that you could win those people who don't have faith to you. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. I pray you got blessed by the